the Ohio State mood tracker, the current mood of your average Ohio State fan is, I think they're still learning the ways of the sledgehammer. For a while, under Ryan Day, I have had some things I can take to the bank. We're going to have a pretty prolific offense here. We're going to have a high-level quarterback. He's going to be talked about in the Heisman race, first-round draft pick, etc. But I've lost to Michigan two years in a row, and that's not great. But it's very easy to sit around and say, we can't lose to Michigan for a third year in a row. Well, of course you can't, but that's abstract. Get specific. How are you going to do that? And then pretend you're Ryan Day and his staff in January after your season ends. You guys sit around in that war room. How are you going to make sure it doesn't happen? Well, the answer is you can't be the second most physical team on the field anymore because you have been the last couple of years. I know he went off on Lou Holtz. Hey, I'm saying it much more respectfully than Holtz did because also I'm not speaking in the present tense. I think they pushed the right buttons. At least I think I did. I think they did. I think they made some of the right moves. But if you're an Ohio State fan, your mood when you've watched this team struggle to pull away from inferior competition early in games could leave you a little hesitant. And the reality is, I think some of the things they had to change about the program in order to build the kind of culture and build the kind of edge they need to down the road beat Michigan in Ann Arbor may require not looking like the prettiest version of Buckeye football in history offensively. you got to know what you're asking for. If I asked you to question, in other words, if I spoke at the, the Columbus, Ohio quarterback club in January, which I assume exists because it does in the South in every town, and I were to say, straw poll, do you guys want the, the brand of team that's able to beat Michigan and go toe-to-toe with a Georgia, for example, if you see them again? I get 100% yes. Well, maybe not 100%. There's always 1% who says the sky's purple, but 99% would say yes. Okay, do you know what that looks like? It may look bumpy. It may look like, you know, hanging 23 on Indiana in week one because I may not be throwing the ball all over the yard. It may be that we're really even with some inferior teams before we eventually pull away and win 37 to 17. But what if the ultimate payoff down the road is defense giving your offense time to get itself in gear, and then you got a very complimentary and prolific talent roster down the road that can win games in a multitude of different ways. What if that's the payoff? They're not selling on this team. Team's undefeated. Team's got Penn State coming in there next week. No, no one's selling on the team. But, you know, listen, when you've had a super soaker in your hands and all of a sudden you exchange it for a sledgehammer, you kind of look at that sledgehammer for a second. got to get used to that thing. And then down the road, you look like Triple H holding that sledgehammer, the cerebral assassin, as Jim Ross would call him. Maybe that's what you turn into. You don't become that overnight. You you got to get a little taste for it. I think they have immunity. You got to get a little taste for it. And I think that some fans are still struggling with that. You get used to a certain way of winning. Florida was like that. Florida learned a way of winning. When Steve Spurrier was down there and Urban Meyer reinforced that and then other guys wanted to try and win different ways. And by the way, it didn't help. They weren't very good at it. But even if they were good at it, even if Will Muschamp flourished at Florida, it was going to take a while for those folks to understand we're about to ball control and defense our way to a title down here. That was going to take a little while and it may take a little while in Columbus. That's okay, though. I think they'll get there. 